welcome to Film Shapes. Rolly's here. Hi, Rolly. Hey, how you doing? Uh, good, thanks. Um, we're just out of a, a film called Breaking Bread. Yeah, we're walking. It, walking home. Um, we're dodging the rain. It doesn't look like it's going to rain now, which is good. Um, this film is a kind of a documentary, would you say? Yeah, definitely I, a documentary. I wouldn't... I thought of it more like a promo film. Oh, it's, a, it's a foodie documentary. It's, it's something you'd normally probably watch on SBS television. Mm. I'm not sure it, it, it's an experience that needs the cinema. Okay. But um, enjoyable film, just the same. Uh, one of those things that you would definitely walk out hungry. Yeah, with some good food in there. Even if you had, had a chocolate bomb. We'll, we'll, like we'll have... Right. Um, we should explain this is a... a like. Um, a woman who she's a she's an Arab Israeli. Is that right? An Arab Israeli. She was the she's... first winner of Israeli Master Chef from uh, from the Arab Israeli world. I suppose. Yeah, you'd I think say. it's correct to say she's a Palestinian Israeli as well. And, okay. Um, I know uh, it's it's not that commonly known in probably our part of the world that mm-hmm. Palestinian. Palestinians in actual Israel, not the occupied territories, make up about 20% of the population. Is that right? Okay. That is correct. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that fact. Just letting you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so this film really looked at a, a town called Haifa. Yeah. Uh, in the north of Israel. Which opened my eyes a bit. Uh, that seems to be quite an inclusive town, doesn't it? Yeah, it seems to be one They're of the proud more, of that. One of the most inclusive towns in Israel yeah. where... Uh, Arabs and Israelis and Christians and Christians all get together in a reasonably um, well good-hearted manner and um, uh, this lady had put on a food festival what do you reckon about the atheists there though how do you reckon we fare I mean I fare uh, well I think they, I, I think you're actually allowed to be an atheist in Israel as well that's good it's good to hear um, she, so she, yeah she's putting on this what's it called Al what was it Asham Oh, I've forgotten the name of it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Al-Asham, which is the, the Levant area, including Syria, Lebanon, um, Israel, etc. Uh, food from that area, right? So she's trying to promote food from the area rather than specifically from Israel or from Palestine or Gaza Strip yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and she's matched up. She's matching up uh, Israeli chefs with Arab chefs, basically. Yeah, yep. And seeing how they, you know, are there any sparks? And yeah, and I think I think importantly, so the what are they saying the the Israeli people want to taste Arab dishes, yeah, and vice versa. So right. it was a bit of a challenge for the two chefs to work together for mm. whatever audience we, who I assume would mostly be the the, the town, the Haifa town, maybe a yeah, lot all of around would come Israel, from probably yeah. elsewhere as well, yeah. Um, but it looked like a great festival over three days and yeah. um, lots and lots of food. Yeah, some One good thing stuff I there. I noticed in this film, I'm not sure if it was a little bit strange, but there was a lot of shots of the food, a lot of slow mo shots of the mm-hmm. food, as you'd expect. Yeah. It looked delicious. Sure. But not a lot of, um, aside from the chefs, uh. not a lot of the public. Shots eating of the public it, yeah. eating yeah, yeah. and going, oh, it's delicious. That's you know, true. I would yeah. have thought there'd be a, a bit more of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's there, a good it point. Made, it felt like a conscious decision. Now, have you that didn't have, that. have you ever seen those shows like Master Chef or what, what are some other reality cooking shows? I've never seen any. Yeah, uh, yeah Master Chef's the main one. Uh, there's... Was it anything like that? Was the whole setup anything like that? As in the the structure of the the film? Well, Master Chef is a really more of a competition show so no it wasn't okay the structure wasn't anything like that um i, I would say some of the cinematography techniques yeah, of yes. course yeah yeah <laughs> yeah there was one scene did, did you notice with the the, the bearded fella who's half christian half jewish i think that fella and the young sort of little bit ingratiating guy from Akko up on the the coast oh yeah yeah they, i couldn't hear a thing they, i think they screwed up the sound on one of their conversations you notice that yeah yeah the sound was it was pretty kind of um specifically for those two yeah audio wise yeah you're right actually yeah. i did notice that right um, it's hard to hear that guy i guess they thought oh this is all we got from them we have to run run it anyway um one warning if you're trying to quit cigarettes I wouldn't watch this film. There's so much smoking in it. Oh, his, these, his... Guys, these guys are smoking in the kitchen. They're oh, smoking know, out the front of the restaurant. They're smoking everywhere. Yeah, here's a busy road. Speaking of speaking of audio problems, here we go across. Yeah, we're we're yeah. to talk. Okay. 
Uh, Watch out for this, this car's going to... Oh, we can do it. Look we out. can do it. Ah! And we're back. Um, yeah, I, I want to... Now, you, you used to be a smoker. Am I okay to say this? Oh, sure. But, uh, you know, I, even even watching this... Yeah, it, uh, it it would even make a non-smoker feel like a cigarette. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. no. I was I was almost disgusted. But dude, you've got these fucking great looking dishes here, and you've you're putting durry ash <laughs> all over the top of it. Now, can, can also Is here's that, a do you, oh, want to, God, yeah. do you want to do this, Ali? Sure. Okay. Um, it was. Is this a? Do you think this is a theory I had halfway through the film, watching these guys durrying on a, a bit? Do you think that they are better cooks because they have to make it more tasty? For them to taste, because the smoke has dulled their senses a bit, their taste senses. Oh. What do you reckon? Oh, I... Otherwise, oh. you got you lose your. Is it true so you lose your what taste? What you're sense. saying, in, what you're saying, in a way, they would have to overcompensate. And yes, their, their food would be too tasty for the average palate. <laughs> yes, I'm not sure that's true. No, I don't think it's uh, okay. It <laughs> Bombed. Um, okay, but uh, yeah, I don't know. The um, you know, there was that one shot of the. <laughs> Of the guy with he's got the um, kind of Israeli cross Israeli Christian. He was a bit of an atheist anyway. I got that impression. There's a beardy fella. The beardy guy. Okay. Yeah. Um, sort of walking out the front of his restaurant with a cigarette and his pot belly and yeah. in slow motion looking to the side. <laughs> yes. You know, you can hopefully you can picture that. But um, it was yeah, a bit but, of a gangster movie trope that yeah, one. I think there yeah. are a few kind of subtle laughs in this yeah yeah on that level where you're just kind of laughing at these different characters which most of all or most of whom are um all pretty likable you know yeah i think so um, yeah. even the woman that appeared to not really let her husband talk right, so. um, well that's what i thought they, when i thought, thought this this master chef thing do they often have couple married couples on there and or is that a different reality crappy show i'm thinking no, they of do, they do do things in here i think that's a different show okay I don't watch any of them, so I'm just guessing here. But yeah, this this really didn't go for any kind of uh, pitting one one team or anything uh, against the other. I think that would have been kind of a little bit inappropriate in the context of yeah. what the film was the whole, trying I mean, to the whole, achieve. The whole <laughs> message was what just uh, you know, if if food can you know get people together and solve the. The issues in the Middle East, all, all good. Yeah, that's what it's all about, I think. Yeah, and the f- uh, the film's really cautious of of not trying to overstate the power of food to bring uh, two nations like this together with all the historical problems. But yeah. I actually think there is a lot of potential there for simple things like food that we have to share to be able to kind of cancel out a lot of the other issues that people have just when you're sitting around a table eating yeah. and enjoying a, a dish that's that comes from both places and regionally right that's it, a hope is isn't distinct. it you know, yeah. i think that does offer a, a little bit of hope yeah that's 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 i mean the one thing that sort of a little bit of a highlight of that issue was that cool town in is it called gazak or galak or something up in northern israel which is half israeli and half lebanese there's a bloody great fence running through the middle of it, right? Oh, yeah, this is right on the border yeah. uh, of Lebanon and at some point... And uh, Israel, Israel and, yeah. decided to... When they well, took the Golan Heights, yeah. Well, I mean, they didn't, they didn't just go around the town, they <laughs> split the actual town in half, so I'm not sure how, pra- how that practically works. And the thing that happens in, um, is it Nicosia in Cyprus as well? Half of the city is, is Greek and half is Turkish? I think yeah. it's sort of similar to that, but yeah, it looks um, interesting. He, he says... You know, he's a that guy. I can't remember his name. Ali, maybe. Mm. He's quite proud of his town, isn't he? Yeah, and it's going to be a big boom for the world from this small town. You know? And he says at the at the end there, with the special dish uh, that he brought to town, which was a uh, a kind of dried yogurt thing that his grandmother used to make, and yeah. she'd soak this yogurt for a month <coughs> and then dry it for twenty, 20 days, days in the sun. <laughs> and, um, big effort. And uh, yeah, and he. Uh, the guy he was doing, putting in the restaurant with for this particular dish, um, he he had added his own flavour to it, didn't he? he right, a bit of lamb or something. With, yeah, with some lamb and different herbs and mm. things. And he said at the end, oh, you know, he did it better than me. Right, but that's not nice. better than my grandmother. <laughs> yes, yeah. That to, to be fair, that's my favourite looking one. I'd like to crack onto that one. Looks pretty good. Well, did you have a favourite dish from that film? 
Oh, yeah, I, I, the one that caught my eye was the, I think it was a um, kofta, a style, I can't remember if it was a lamb or a, maybe it was a chicken kofta, which is the uh -huh. kind of minced meat around a stick, but it was around a stick of cinnamon. Ah, that's where and I the, heard you go. Oh, like you heard me there. I heard I you, like, yeah. Oh. That was an oh. Yeah. Um, right. You'd eat the cinnamon there too? Or is I don't that think just you'd a, eat it. I think you'd just sort it, of lick it, lick it off at the end. Yeah, that's, would that'd be a bit the, full the on, wouldn't it? As well. You wouldn't eat a whole cinnamon stick. That, what would happen? No, actually, you should. Give it a go when you get home. <laughs> eat, eat a fucking um, <laughs> a potato without cooking it. Go and try that then. I'll do that. Uh, okay. yeah, we'll okay. do it, yeah. Uh, yeah that, that, I hear a little applause at the end of this film too. There was a little... Yeah, so... Look at that. Uh, I'm st I know I'm still you were a, bit... a little sceptical about that. I don't... Like, why are they, why are they clapping? Do it. <laughs> I didn't come across all Victorian dad or anything. Well, I, th I think but it's literally because we're two days after a, out of a um, into a ceasefire. Yeah, maybe uh, on the Gaza Strip with Israel and Hamas. So I don't know, man. I'm just, call I, me a call I me a prick. I think that's the reason why there's happening in the cinema today. Okay. After this film, yes. Okay. Uh, well, I can't see the point of clapping in a cinema where the filmmaker is not there. Do you know? If the filmmaker was there doing a prezi. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's applaud this this filmmaker. The, what are we pl applauding the projectionist? What's going on here? I'd be interested to hear other people's comments on that. But, um, All right. Yeah. Write in if you've got an opinion <laughs> there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fine. You do? Okay. Yeah. But you, you know, you're a performer of old, aren't you? Oh, and currently, I should say, you you expect the applause. Well, you you no, you bathe in the applause. But your point is saying is saying that if the performer isn't there, then the clap is unnecessary. Okay, so saying... when I when I play um, West Street One to Five, at the end of it, I don't fucking clap because I know you're not going to hear it. Well, but okay? you're, you're not in a cinema with uh, sixty other people or so, so. But isn't that a sort of isn't that a sort of arrogance? Oh, I'm clapping so the other people around me can hear that I appreciate it. You know, I think it's a. Oh, I think it's kind of just a little connection at the end to say we all appreciated that yeah. together. I suppose I wasn't and then offended. People like you that say, <laughs> actually, I didn't appreciate it. I'm not going to connect with you at all. <laughs> Wrong. I did appreciate it. I'm just internalising that appreciation. <laughs> uh, you know, at least I didn't. And I'm better than all of you. At least look I... at me. I'm different. <laughs> at least I didn't <laughs> badmouth your. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'd love to eat that. You know, <laughs> at least I didn't badmouth that. I think you're, you're exaggerating there. I don't remember it being a... Oh. Maybe it was. A little bit. I'm getting a bit puffed, so let's uh, let's wrap this up. Okay, we'll jog the rest of the way. Oh, no, thanks. Bye. Oh, I see you. Bye. Bye-bye. When I founded the Sham Festival, I did not want to stay Israel, I didn't want to stay Palestine. I don't believe there is any room for politics in the kitchen. As someone that born as a Palestinian and live here as an Israeli, this stuff make you confuse who you are, who you want to be. I don't give a f that he's Arab, like he doesn't give a f that I'm a Jew. The only thing we're going to give a f is about making art.